over in Kenya, National Bank of Kenya has posted a 53% fall in full year pre tax profit to 1.15 billion shillings. Hurt by higher lending rates, net interest income plunged 94% to 310 million shillings. Uh, for now, let's take a look at the Kenyan market scene. Uh, recapping first, as things are played out uh, on Friday's trading session, we had the Nairobi Stock Exchange rising for the first time in seven sessions uh, by just 0.1%. Uh, and that, as some small cap firms rose on the back of strong results, uh, strong earnings, uh, we've got to take in mind uh, improved income from dividends as well, and then sustained speculation on counters yet to announce their results as well. We had uh, shares in the region's leading media house nation uh, media rising 5.9% to 321 shillings per share. And that after the firm said on Wednesday that its full year profit rose by a quarter. Of course, we've had traders saying that Nation Media Group is still bullish, backed by the one for five bonus issue and seven shilling 50 final dividend as well. On the currency front, the Kenyan shilling was steady on Friday. The trade is saying likely to weaken in the coming sessions and that due to a traditional rise in demand four dollars from importers at the end of the month. It had been hemmed in the 85 to 86 range last week, hampered by concerns over a constitutional challenge to the result of this month's presidential elections. The Supreme Court, remember, is due to rule on Odinga's petition uh, by the end of this week and if it orders a rerun of the election, pressure could pile up on the shilling. For now, we've got the unit sitting at 85 shillings, 75 to the greenback. Let's get into some analysis of these markets now with Ronald Lugalia, who's an investment analyst at AIB Capital. Thanks so much, Ronald, for joining us this morning. Well, as I said, National Bank of Kenya out with results this morning, and that headline number is startling, a drop in profit of 53% coming to the fore. What do you make of the headline numbers released today? Okay, it does not come as a, as a surprise to me. Um, a drop in profit was expected because at the third quarter, September last year, nine months from January, NBK had uh, around uh, 294 million in terms of their profit. That compares to 1.1 billion that they had made in 2001. Uh, two, 2011. So most likely you would have expected that um, uh, they wouldn't make much in the fourth quarter. But uh, of course, yes, uh, you would also try to think uh, about the high interest rate that now we had uh, last year, which could have also increased uh, their, their cost. They were opening up branches around the country. They were also open uh, and need to do some other new products. So the production costs were also high. But NBK is a bank that now people should be watching at because most people would think that now is a sleeping giant. At a P of uh, 3.94, you would expect this bank okay, to like, uh, pick up going forward because of the new management, which we tend to believe okay, when they start introducing some new products like corporate uh, clients, uh, 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 small and medium enterprises, most likely you would see them unlocking the potential that they haven't unlocked for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So safe to assume that you'd be a buyer in a National Bank of Kenya uh, at current valuations? Uh, right now, I would, uh, uh, if I'm a long-term investor looking to, okay, for a company, okay, a banking stock which hasn't uh, 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 tapped some of its potential, I'd look at NBK right now because with the new management, we expect okay to make a turnaround. I would want to see what they do in first quarter towards the uh, and, and first half, and then make my concrete decision. But going forward, uh, uh, okay, I expect investors to start looking at. Uh, and the bank and in the, general, in the general market to start investing based on their fundamentals. It's interesting that you say it's the higher interest rate environment that has had a bearing on the set of numbers, Ronald, because making headlines this morning is the fact that lenders are likely to lower their borrowing costs moving forward. Lending rates expected to fall as the current levels are not sustainable, many analysts saying in view of the lower policy rate. So are we looking at a changing of the tides here and uh, how soon? Okay, uh, interest rates uh, at the current CBR rate of 9.55, okay, 9.50, CBK just maintained the number from the previous one that number they had issued. So most banks are likely to like, um, uh, try and maintain the 
rates at where they are right now. At 18%, and, uh, I mean, that is quite a large discrepancy. We're looking at 18% relative to 9.5%. Okay, most probably you, uh, uh, it is about the policies that now we have right now. Re okay, we still have a bill that is, real, uh, need, that is yet to come through, whereby they wanted, okay, the parliament had pushed like now to, to peg the, uh, uh, the lending rates on some other limits, which has not come through. But we expect uh, going forward as the, okay, Kenya being an open market, uh, we expect the banks, because of high competition that is going to be there for customers, they should be able to like, uh, levelize the interest rate and maybe calm down. But uh, what I know about um, and, uh, our banking sector, the interest rates are, uh, are, are based on the banks to make their own decisions. It's, it can't be pegged on a... a, a a rule or a policy that number should take it down. Well, despite that high uh, lending uh, interest rate uh, and lending environment, we've got uh, companies still forging ahead with their expansion plans and uh, delving further into debt. Ronald Kenjan seeking 429 billion shillings to finance energy pr uh, projects moving forward. Uh, the deal is the largest of its kind in sub-Saharan Africa and is expected to see the electricity generator established power generating projects in wind, solo, geothermal and hydroelectricity over the next five years or so. What's your view on Kenjen and the current uh, CapEx plans it has in the pipeline? For Kenjen, is a utility company. The potential is so big. If we look at okay, what we expect under the vision 2030, in 2030 we expect the, uh, the demand for power to be like 17,000 megawatts. And uh, this is what Kenjen is looking out the like, number to tap into. Right now, uh, uh, the source of financial number they are looking at is uh, from uh, strategic investors, investors who are willing not to come out. So, uh, by st uh, it is a matter of structuring their, okay, okay being able to structure their capital and, and, and uh, plan in a way that it can still be able to meet. The, uh, their obligations in terms of paying interest number to the bondholders and as a well, uh, at the same time giving it back to the equity holders. Yeah, well, some of the banking groups that are set to leverage off its uh, CapEx plans are the likes of uh, Barclays Group, Barclays Bank of Kenya, Barclays uh, Bank PLC as well, where they're a part of that uh, consortium, in fact, leading uh, the consortium uh, which has been uh, approached to finance 1,600 megawatts worth of electricity projects moving forward. In the meantime, uh, Ke Airtel Kenya not sitting on its laurels either. It's investing eight and a half billion shillings in local operations in the country. Uh, Ronald, how do you see this shifting the landscape and specifically the kind of implications it has for a player like Safaricom? I wouldn't expect the Airtel move not to make a big impact on Safaricom. Remember, Safaricom has been a strong counter all through. It has made tremendous um, move in terms of uh, developing its product, developing its business, and it has set itself out as an innovator. And uh, okay, in, um, Airtel coming in, Safaricom has most of the market share, and it has uh, it, it has really strategically okay, positioned itself in all the sectors uh, in, in the tel communication industry where the business is going to grow. We're talking about data, we're talking about voice and uh, SMS also. So uh, I'm talking about also IT. So Safaricom is well positioned and it has the capacity, it has the funds number to be able to fight off any other uh, uh, competition that number might come out from different. 